A community is reeling after a deadly stabbing at a high school in Maynard. The latest from investigators and what the school is doing to help out students. A Texas House committee investigating the case of Robert Robertson is now taking it to the state Supreme Court. Why Texas AG Ken Paxton is pushing back against the subpoena. I'm tracking a cold front, maybe trying to push some showers through the region tomorrow morning. Then I'll have your trick-or-treating forecast and look into the weekend on First Morning Weather. In-depth investigative. This is KXAN News at Noon. Today, the city of Maynard is grieving. Classes are canceled today and tomorrow after a student died in a stabbing yesterday at Maynard Senior High School. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Avery Travis. And I'm Will Dupree. The school district says the stabbing happened after a fight between two students. Police say a teenager used a kitchen knife to stab another teen. First responders tried to save 18-year-old Darren Loving, but he died shortly thereafter. Police arrested the suspect, 18-year-old Mac Brown Imba Mbamwe. Officers are still working to determine why this happened. We have witnesses that we are still currently speaking to and interviewing. What we do know is it was an isolated incident and there is no threat currently to the public or the uh, students at the school. We know social media is playing an important role in the case so far. Police say they are aware of footage posted online. They say it appears to show a young person on the ground covered in blood. Students were sharing their concerns while still inside the school yesterday. Once everybody got the news, we were all automatically shaken up. So we're all thinking like, okay, I can't just sit here and focus on this screen when I know somebody literally like near us, it got hurt. We saw videos of like this kid like on the ground and like pictures of him on the ground like with like, him holding his neck and like I think a police officer holding him. It was like, it wasn't really shocking because like why would someone do this? Police say they will also be reviewing school surveillance footage. Right now it's unclear if students will return to class by this Friday. However, counselors are available today until 3 this afternoon for those affected by the loss. A team of volunteers trained to recognize dangerous situations involving students plans to be at Maynard ISD schools tomorrow. The group Stop Now works with the nonprofit One in Five Foundation for Kids. It's an organization focused on preventing school violence. Organizers created it after the deadly Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde two years ago. The foundation says it's going to be at Maynard schools for several weeks. Well, today is the first day of the sentencing hearing for Austin police officer Christopher Taylor. A few weeks ago, Taylor was found guilty by a jury of deadly conduct. This comes after the 2019 police shooting of Maurice Da Silva. Taylor's attorneys argued the officer acted to protect himself and others, but prosecutors said Da Silva was having a mental health episode and was only a threat to himself. Deadly conduct carries a sentence of two to 10 years in prison or probation. Taylor is choosing to have a judge hand down his sentence, not a jury. Members of a Texas House committee investigating the case of death row inmate Robert Robertson are taking their dispute to the state Supreme Court. This is all happening as the state attorney general is calling on that committee's chairman to now resign. According to our media partners of the Texas Tribune, the committee says Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is resisting their subpoena for Robertson's testimony. The subpoena delayed Robertson's execution two weeks ago. Back in 2003, Robertson was sentenced to die for the murder of his two-year-old daughter. The Attorney General's office condemned the committee for getting involved in the case. The committee members say they believe there was evidence not considered in the case. They say they'd like to hear from Robertson so that they can understand if a junk science law is being properly followed. Now, if that law was not followed, it could overturn a case like this. At the same time, Paxton is calling on committee chair Jeff Leach to resign and even face charges. Paxton said in a statement, quote, Jeff Leach sought to alter the outcome of capital punishment proceedings by criminally attempting to influence a judge. Leach previously said he sent a text message to a friend who is a judge on the Court of Criminal Appeals to reconsider the case. He says the judge shut that down immediately. Leach says he did not know there was any pending dispute on the matter before the court and apologized. He also called out some other leaders in Texas saying he was not afraid to admit when he messed up. 
first warning weather. On this Wednesday afternoon, we want to show you a live look from atop the Austonian in downtown Austin. Clouds still hanging around this morning, Avery, and uh, we even saw a little bit of rain, and I want to emphasize just a little bit. <laughs> Will said a couple of drops on his uh, windshield. Very much so. It didn't even take the windshield wipers to get it off there. Hey, we'll take it, though. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> meteorologist Tommy House, you've been tracking it for us. Every little drop counts. That's right. I have a confession. I haven't washed my car in a few weeks. I probably should have, and it's a white car, so I ran outside today and I was like this did nothing and I, I, I should probably take it to the car wash because today for the rest of the day in Austin we'll probably be dry toward like range 77 290 you may get a few windshield wiper swipes on a shower and then that's pretty much it notice rain coverage through the afternoon hours that's just 10 percent then dropping to zero once the sun goes down that'll pick back up though early for your Thursday Halloween morning commuting to work may have to drive slow and safe in some heavier showers I do think it's going to be pretty scattered and isolated for the most part east of I-35 temp checks right now 87 in LaGrange wow out toward the hill country a little bit cooler in the upper 70s, but you add on the heat with the humidity, real feel probably creeping into the 90s out there toward Giddings and Rockdale and Cameron. Upper 60s, dew points in Austin, and then mid 60s farther west toward Llano County. Now, here's the dew point trend across the next few days. We're going to stay in this humid to very humid category. Winds will be out of the south today. Right now, wind speeds clocking in between 5 and 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 30 miles per hour throughout the afternoon hours. Kind of becoming a little more weak toward the evening, but the big picture is, well, the gusts continuing today. Very hot, could be breaking records. So morning showers for your Halloween, but your trick-or-treating forecast looks dry, which is great news, but rain chances continuing every single day across the next week. We'll have your full forecast and talking about cooler temperatures coming up on First Warning Weather. All right, thanks so much, Tommy. Claims by Texas politicians of preserving election integrity may have had the opposite effect. A recent investigative report reveals some citizens were mistakenly identified as not eligible to vote and were kicked off the voter rolls. The Texas Tribune, along with ProPublica and VoteBeat, published that report earlier this month. They contacted at least 70 people, finding at least 10 affected. It highlights why all voters should confirm their voter registration status while there's still time. Now, we talked to the vice president of the nonpartisan League of Women Voters of the Austin area about what you should do if you received a letter saying you've been kicked off. Ideally, you would have responded within that 30 days, um, but a lot of folks don't. And state law says that as long as you are correcting something, essentially, you can do that at any point. Now, she also says you should contact your elections office to verify what you need to submit to prove your citizenship. From there, you can call the Secretary of State's office to cross-check whatever your county tells you. And you can also confirm your voter registration status online through that same office. Let's get a look now at the latest early voting numbers. Close to 37,000 people in Travis County went to the polls on Tuesday. In total, more than 356,000 people have already voted early. In Williamson County, nearly 18,000 voted in person on Tuesday, close to 203,000 since the start of early voting. Going a little deeper, if you don't want to wait in a long line to cast your ballot, we checked the polling locations with the lowest voter turnout so far. Those are the Anita Ferales Coy facility in East Austin and the Cepeda Branch Library, also in East Austin, just a few blocks away. We also found some low voter turnout at the Dell Valley Community Center and the Travis County Civil Courts and Family Facility. We've got a link to the county's wait times map on KXAN.com. A new Central Texas community is being built inside a factory. The Amherst Group is behind this plan to bring 145 homes to Lockhart. However, all of them are first being built at its housing studio just southeast of San Antonio. Then the homes will be installed on site in Lockhart. This sometimes cuts construction time in half, down to four months compared to a traditional home. Everything that leaves the factory doesn't really get exposed to the elements. So everything's getting done 80% of the home uh, in a controlled environment. The company says it's doing this because of the city's growing population. Going in depth, when it comes to home prices, Lockhart is considerably cheaper than the greater Austin area. An analysis from Redfin reports that home prices dropped there by more than 9% compared to last year. That puts the average cost at about $260,000 as of September. 
Austin, meanwhile, saw an almost 7% drop in prices, putting the median home price at $425,000. We are taking a live look now out over Lake Travis, where we're seeing the sun peek through those clouds just a little bit. Tommy House has been tracking our forecast for Halloween and beyond. He'll have more on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first, some sad news out of Hollywood. Terry Garr, the Oscar-nominated actress who created quirky, sweet, and funny characters in movies and TV, has died at age 79. Ann Thompson has a look back at her life and her career. Terry Garr was no dumb blonde, but few played the role better. Would you like to have a roll in the hay? The ditzy lab assistant in Young Frankenstein. Put the candle back. Dustin Hoffman's actress friend in Tootsie. I'm in love with another woman. <laughs> Earning an Academy Award nomination. I read The Second Sex. I read The Cinderella Complex. She could play other roles, too, featured in Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Mr. Mom with a young Michael Keaton. I owe you one, Jack. The Ohio native got her start as a dancer in Elvis Presley films and her break on Star Trek. She would become a frequent and favorite guest of David Letterman on his talk show. Uh, uh, Dave? Yeah? Your hair looks good. No, I don't. And Phoebe's mom on Friends. You know, I wanted to tell you yesterday, but I just... <laughs> you know, I felt all floopy and <laughs> struggling for years with an illness, finally diagnosed as multiple sclerosis. I feel like I'm out there putting a face on it and going, I'm going on with my life. Gar is survived by a daughter and grandson and roles that will keep future generations laughing. Ann Thompson, NBC News. She will forever be Inga for me in Young Frankenstein. That movie was so influential, the comedy of it all. I love that. So, um, I mean, what a huge loss. So much talent, though, and so many great roles still on the screen. We were saying earlier, it's really beautiful that she kept working and talked about her illness and, and really wanted to show people you can still, you know, follow your dreams and, and do the things that you love to do, even absolutely. in the wake of something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, all right. We want to know what's going on with our Halloween forecast. It, it, it's honestly a great trend that we're dealing with here. Here, let's talk about it right now. We are dealing with, first of all, a very dry stretch of weather. So the rainfall across the next week will be much appreciated. Just one day of rain measured, I can't maybe, hundredth of an inch, Friday the 18th. Besides that, it's been much warmer than average. It's been hot, and even before that, going all the way back to the start of September, less than a half an inch in total, I can't maybe, in Austin. So now two months on end with just little to no rainfall. Clouds and radar right now, east of I-35. A few light showers approaching southern parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas. The big picture is a cold front's trying to work its way through very slowly throughout the afternoon into the overnight hours tonight. High pressure well to our east, which actually opens the door for multiple days on end of rain. We'll get to that in just a bit, but for the rest of the day today, temperatures will climb back up into the upper 80s, low 90s. If we reach 90, that will tie a record set back in the 1940s. We could even potentially be breaking another day of record high temperatures. That's been the name of the game pretty much all throughout the month. 10% chance of showers. I may drop this after, let's say, 1 o'clock because most likely Austin will be dry through the rest of the day today. Winds out of the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, 30% chance of showers. That will be very late in the night, probably more toward the early morning for your Thursday. Winds will continue to blow out of the south. Now, this cold front slowly working its way through central Texas by the very early hours. Notice how much stronger the storms are northern parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, even east of DFW. Once this slides through, the showers pretty much weaken substantially and the front kind of just falls apart and remains stationary. So looking at rainfall probabilities, not a lot to deal with. Well north of Austin to find 40%. Austin's kind of in that in between 20 to 30%. Farther south and west of the city toward, let's say, Gillespie County. That's when our odds really begin to drop here. Putting a big picture of this out the door early tomorrow morning. Very disorganized. A lot of sunshine you could see even through the late morning into the early afternoon hours. Kind of very hit or miss sprinkles throughout the afternoon. But trick-or-treating forecast, outdoor plans, reservations, festivities, fun plans with friends. And you want to just hang outside for a few hours tomorrow night. Things should be looking relatively dry, which is great news. All this is said and done through Saturday. 
you know, maybe up to an inch farther up north and east of us. I don't think it's going to be a wash out by any sort of means, but notice the rain coverage chances continue Thursday, Friday, Saturday, well into next week. And when I show you the first one weather seven day forecast, you're going to be happy looking at these temperatures. 90 today, which again could tie or even break a record if we hit 91, but into next week, 78 degrees next Tuesday. Welcome back everyone. The latest jobs report released by the U.S. Department of Labor included a look at the unemployment rate for veterans. In September, that came in at 2.8%, but that was much lower than the national unemployment rate last month of 4.1%. For veterans still searching for work though here in Texas, there is some help available to really try to connect them with jobs. Here to talk more about the hiring Red, White and You job fair is our two guests here this afternoon. Anna Baker is the Texas Veterans Commission Veteran Employment Services Director and an Air Force veteran herself. And Isaac Marquez Diaz, who is an Army veteran. Welcome to you both. We're so happy you could be here. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Yeah, Isaac, we want to start with you because we understand you were recently looking for employment. Uh, talk to us about that journey and kind of what it took to be able to finally land a job. So it's, it was a little bit difficult because when you transition from the military, it's a little bit hard when you're trying to you know, fit wherever you're fitting because the jobs are completely different. Mm -hmm. So having to find uh, the Texas Veterans Commission to help you and having a career advisor that helps you, you know, putting those experiences into a resume better, then you can you know, kind of transition in the words at the better way to explain everything you did. It was great because that way, uh, and now working for the TV, uh, Texas Veterans Commission, having that being in that position to help other veterans and do the same. Yeah, sounds like a perfect position almost for you. Yes, sir. That's amazing. So talk a little bit more about the barriers that you see, you know, that you faced in your own life, but that you all see with other veterans. What are some of the things that get in the way of helping them find the right job? Yeah, so some of the barriers that the veterans that we work with have are home stability or housing stability, Sometimes we work with veterans who've been incarcerated, uh, additionally older veterans. So we still have Vietnam veterans who are looking to, who want to work and so we will work with them. And then also our younger veterans. So those veterans that may have only been in for two to four years and they're still quite young and they haven't really built up a, a career or a resume. So we, we, we strive to help them find meaningful employment. Yeah, jumping in there and help that translation of skills. Uh, what all do you do to be able to help kind of say, you know, these skills that they acquired in the military are able to be translated and applied to a civilian job? Yeah, so our veteran career advisors are the ones who work with the veterans and, and they have a lot of tools and resources to help veterans um, you know, look at what did you do in the service and how that translates into the civilian job market. And then I'm gonna let Isaac talk about what he does because it's really two parts mm -hmm. working together. So what I do is I create uh, employer events. I can do this different ones like just for an employer, like a meet and greet that I, like we have even had one today with like a heritage roofing construction for mm -hmm. veterans to go see what they, what positions they have for them. Oh, wow. Also big job fairs that we have, uh, like I'm partnering with Indeed to have one in this uh, November 19th here in Austin and creating those opportunities for them to go see what's out there because I know it's hard to, for them to actually find the perfect one. They might think about a specific company and like, oh, this company has this position for me, but they don't think about other maybe local companies that might have that same position and they might have a better opportunity with them. Hmm. You mentioned employers there. We know there's so many benefits for an employer to hire a veteran, including a tax credit. Could you talk a little bit about the employer side of things? Um, yeah, I mean, so the, a lot of times the employers aside, uh, along with having a tax credit uh, for hiring veterans, there's also a lot of benefit in hiring veterans because veterans are dependable, uh, they, you know, they show up on time, uh, they're real good at uh, following processes and procedures. So the goal of the, the veteran employer liaisons and the veteran career advisors is to work together to get that veteran job ready and then connect them with the employers. Um, and we also help employers develop their own uh, employee resource group for veterans. So there's a lot of things out there. We help them get their jobs and to work in Texas if they've got open positions. So there's a lot of things that we can do with the employers to help them find 
job ready veterans. Yeah, before we wrap everything up, I want to mention again that job fair that's happening. It's yes. called the Hiring Red, White, and You, mm -hmm. uh, which I kind of love that name too. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about what, how that works and what people can do to find out more information. Yeah, so uh, veterans can go to the local Workforce Solutions Office to find out about the Hiring Red, White, and You. The Texas Workforce Commission has a whole schedule listed uh, on their website for all the events throughout the state. And uh, we just invite the veterans to come. Typically, that first hour or two is dedicated just for the veterans to meet with the employers first. And then they'll open up the job event for all of the other uh, individuals who are looking for employment. So much to talk about. I wish we could keep you here all day, but Isaac and Anna, <laughs> thank you so much for giving us a peek inside how this works for veterans and employers too. We also do want to note that the Capital Areas event will be next week, November 7th at the Millennium Youth Entertainment Complex in East Austin for our folks here locally. So thanks so much for being here. Thank Absolutely. you for having us. Thank you. We'll be right back. In-depth investigative. This is KXAN News at Noon. Well, the wait is finally over. The city of Austin and the Austin Police Association have formally signed a five-year agreement. This closes the loop on lengthy negotiations. The city and the police union reached a tentative agreement just last month. And last week, the city council voted in favor of adopting that agreement in a 10 to 1 vote. The city says the agreement includes a 28% pay increase for officers over five years. That new contract is set to take effect immediately. The Texas Department of Transportation wants to hear what you think about the future of mobility here in the state. Draft documents for the Texas statewide active transportation plan outline some of the challenges to mobility. Those include traffic congestion, pedestrian and cyclist fatalities. Some solutions they say are building more sidewalks, bikeways and trails, as well as increasing funding for biking and walking. You can weigh in on what you think about the transportation plan with an online survey that will last through next Monday, November 4th. And we've got a link that'll take you right there to that survey on our website, kxan.com. Austin police are looking for a missing 76-year-old. Her name is Kathy McCown. She was last seen this morning around 345 near the Doubletree Hotel on Business Park Drive. McCown has Alzheimer's and can be nonverbal at times. So if you see her, you're being asked to call 911 or APD's missing persons unit. Investigators in Houston are providing more details about how two 200 unqualified teachers got certified to teach here in Texas. The Harris County District Attorney's Office says people who had trouble passing their certification test would drive to Houston and they say there they would link up with a high school basketball coach named Vincent Grayson. Investigators say Grayson was the kingpin and took in more than a million dollars in the scheme. Prosecutors say applicants would pay Grayson a couple of thousand dollars. Grayson would then give a percentage of that money to a certifying official at the Houston Training and Education Center. Prosecutors say when the applicant would show up at the center, they would leave after checking in and someone would take the test for them. The district attorney says the investigation started after an applicant had a change of heart. A former coach applying as a police officer in a different part of Texas had an attack of conscience and came forward with a scheme that was apparently well known among teacher applicants wanting to be certified and busted this phony test taking scheme right out of the water. Prosecutors charged a total of five people with two counts of engaging in organized criminal activity. First warning weather. We are taking a live look now over downtown Austin where uh, meteorologist Tommy House told us the clouds were coming, but we see them out in full force today. <laughs> they certainly are. And temperatures, Tommy, as well, going up too. The temperatures and the wind. So all that pollen, you know, we haven't had rain just one day in October. It's all hitting me in the face every time I step outside. Here are the latest elements, three of them medium grass mold and fall I'll notice the trends here ragweed is low for the latest updates on this just type in kxan.com slash allergy I mean every single hour we'll have the latest ups and downs and trends and levels there for you easy access if you have any of those big allergies at those particular particular elements 
Radar check as of right now, nothing. We had a few showers earlier today. I bumped down the rain chances to zero for the rest of the day. Hill Country already low 80s, Lano County 81 up toward places like Burnett in the upper 70s, Marble Falls 82, 83 right now at Camp Mabry, 80, how about 85 degrees at the Austin Bergstrom International Airport, a few upper 80s sprinkled in there throughout the afternoon hours. These numbers will continue to jump. Winds out of the south are just pumping in humidity. Dew points in the 70s for several communities, 68 Georgetown, 67 Austin. A bit more dry toward Lano, Mason, and San Saba, but we're all feeling that mugginess in the air. Across the next five to seven days, that will be the continuing stories. These dew points in the upper 60s to low 70s. Wind speeds about, you know, 5, 15, 20 miles per hour. You could see gusts up to 30 miles per hour through the rest of the day. The latest 23 at Camp Mabry in Austin. So here's what I'm tracking. Could be breaking a record high temperature today. Scattered morning showers tomorrow, not severe. We'll dive into those details. How much rain I'm thinking in the overall timing. Will it affect your trick-or-treating forecast? I don't think so. We'll talk about that on First Warning Weather. Tommy, thank you. David DePap, the man who attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband, was sentenced to life without parole Tuesday on his state conviction. The attack took place at the Pelosi San, San Francisco home on October in 2022. Paul Pelosi was hurt in the attack, receiving severe neck and head injuries. A San Francisco judge handed down the sentence on DePap's aggravated kidnapping conviction. He also received eight years on other charges in the state case. He is currently serving a 30-year sentence in federal prison on assault and attempted kidnapping charges. Well, with less than a week until Election Day, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump are driving the message home to voters and their supporters that this election could be a challenge. Last night, Harris delivered that final message from the Ellipse in D.C. while Trump spoke to supporters in Pennsylvania. Basil John reports. Both candidates kicked off the final stretch of their campaigns, but while former President Donald Trump was in a battleground state, Vice President Kamala Harris was here in the nation's capital. Vice President Kamala Harris is headed to North Carolina, coming off the heels of her speech in D.C. Tuesday night. If you give me the chance to fight on your behalf, there is nothing in the world that will stand in my way. With the White House as her backdrop, she reminded Americans of what her opponent did in the same location years before. He is the person who stood at this very spot nearly four years ago and sent an armed mob to the United States Capitol to overturn the will of the people in a free and fair election. I'm asking you to be excited about the future again. Former President Donald Trump took to his stage in Allentown, Pennsylvania, to warn voters of what he says Americans will get with a President Harris. This election is a choice between whether we will have four more years of gross incompetence and failure, the worst administration in the history of our country. Trump will head to North Carolina as well today and then to Wisconsin. For Harris, she's going to Pennsylvania and Wisconsin after North Carolina. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. The Supreme Court rejected efforts by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to remove his name from the ballot in key swing states of Wisconsin and Michigan. Kennedy ended his presidential independent campaign and has endorsed former President Donald Trump. He's now seeking to have his name dropped from the ballots in states where it could be a boost to his new ally. But he's not sought to remove himself from the ballot in all states. The Wisconsin Supreme Court and the Michigan Supreme Court both ruled against Kennedy last month. The high court did not explain its reasoning for rejecting Kennedy's latest plea, but voting is already underway in both of those states. Kennedy previously tried to have his name added to the ballot in New York, but the Supreme Court rejected that motion in September. If these election years make you anxious, chances are you're not alone. A recent National Scripps News poll shows that 37% of Americans describe themselves as feeling anxious heading into the presidential election. Health experts say there is a science behind that anxiety felt by some. They say it can feel like your brain is flooded with election information. You know, you're just bombarded with constant messaging on television, commercials, you know, flyers in the mail. It's everywhere. 
Despite any negative effects of an election year, there are ways to decrease election anxiety. One step, experts advise you to maybe volunteer for causes or candidates you support. And of course, you can do that again by voting. We know part of it is your news feed right now is probably filled with political posts. When you're scrolling online, there's a lot of misinformation and some deliberate disinformation out there. And it's hard to tell sometimes what's fact and what's fiction. Experts say to check to see where that information is coming from. One app that is popular with younger voters is TikTok. That app has what TikTok calls the U.S. Elections Integrity Hub. The app says it is constantly removing videos that provide, quote, misinformation, and it will, it will not recommend content to users if it is unverified. It's an influencer whose expertise lies in uh, music, for example, then think carefully, you know, why am I trusting this source? Is this information legitimate? And really look to trusted sources of information. Experts also recommend you to report bad information from inside the app to help stop the spread of misinformation. You've probably seen therapy dogs brought into senior living facilities to help cheer up the residents, but what about chickens? Hmm, maybe wondering about Buda Oaks. It's an assisted living facility and it recently lost their community chicken and her name was Princess Leia. She was a companion for residents providing pet therapy and the facility donated her eggs to a local food bank. But now Buda Oaks has two new chickens to cheer up their residents thanks to eight-year-old Ansley Price. Earlier this year, she hatched two silky chickens and donated those to Buda Oaks. The facility rolled out a red carpet to welcome the pair, and all of their future eggs will also go to an area food bank. Such a cool concept there. I love that story. It's that so is sweet. Great. That's awesome. And one last thing before we go into our seven day forecast again, we're going to re-talk about this cold front real quickly. Cold air is dense, it sinks, and it replaces warm air. So that's why our temperatures are going from the 90s back down to the upper 70s. It's going to take a few days for it to cool down, but that is your first warning weather universe. You just want to touch on this again because obviously there are a few different times and scenarios where in Texas we do get these cold fronts, so it's not going to be as intense, fast, and furious as sometimes we get them in the fall, but hey, we'll take it. Showers continue in mid-80s on your Thursday, back down to the weekend forecast, low 80s, and when you're voting, upper 70s with some sunshine and showers. All right, thanks so much, Tommy, and thank you all for watching here on KXA on News at Noon. We'll see you back here in about half an hour with more news and weather. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Take care.